We've enjoyed each other's company so much Hot. and yours that we got it. Man, our producer right up against it. it. So let's go quickly. Eight this is the best. national champion. What? Okay, UConn versus Iowa I, State. I, I uh, UConn really winning that matchup. I think it'll be a fist fight. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're in the screen. As you look at the West Region, North Carolina versus Arizona. <laughs> in that matchup, <laughs> All right, people, this North is the best Carolina we can do. To the we could not do work on our lives. So versus Tennessee in the national championship game. UConn over Tennessee to win the. Hey, Brooke is on FaceTime and she will be joining us. Oh, yeah. That's heck of funny. <laughs> All right, we're still setting up. Give us one second. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Well, they win that game. And then you got our final four. I've got Purdue beating, uh, Kentucky, uh, Kentucky beating Purdue and UConn winning it all. Brooke. John Calipari says and, Kentucky and, is built for March, and I tend to agree. But I've got UConn and Illinois. That's going to be a tough one to, to pick because I really like Illinois. Well, like, but I have UConn getting past them in the West. North Carolina and Arizona. Arizona out early last year. That won't happen to the Wildcats this year. On the other side of the bracket, I got Houston and Purdue. Purdue puts down the baggage. But I'm going with the con to win it again. Wow. Ooh. A lot of UConn love, and rightfully so. And I put our researcher, Gil, on the task to make sure if Kentucky and Marquette play in the Sweet 16, it will be the 11th meeting, the 10 meetings, already right the most commonly played NCAA tournament yeah. matchup. Let the madness begin, and the women's selection special starts now. All right, now. let's get to the women. Come on now. Can you guys hear the tweet? Welcome the to the show? NCAA women's selection yeah, special, presented by Capital One. Over 5 thousand games were played across division one this year every bounce every shot every heart stopping moment has led to this a path to glory with all roads leading to the final four in cleveland tonight doesn't just start a march towards madness now for these 68 teams it represents the first steps towards destiny a chance to separate the good and the great all right from the champions and it begins And by right the way, now. the reason we are really Ready? watching this live is because Megan and I are going to Portland anymore. I need to know what Watch we will so be recording. recording. I need to see what I can do. It's a lot. This really went like... The Mighty like, Barbie like, brings it. What a play by Frank. This is one of the hot young talents. Hey, let's go! NCAA tournament is the best no, coaching tournament in all sports. Don't I'm just planning, like, at least, like, week one, like, we'll have age in person. Like, that would be That cool. is right. The drama is building. For these 32 teams, the tension a little less thick. They know they're in as automatic bids. But for 36 others, tonight reveals whether they're in, who they'll play, and where. And we've got cameras everywhere for reaction when they find out with you at home. You are currently looking at an empty bracket yeah, that will soon be filled with the field of 68. Yeah, and then one good. hour from now, we're going to challenge you to go to ESPN.com to fill it out. But for now, we okay. Greetings and hello from Bristol. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Not a single one of us got the memo. Yeah, Not we uh, really That's failed scary. that. This is short. Sure. 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 We sort of look like a gender reveal, but it's fine. <laughs> hello, I am Elle Duncan alongside my whole entire crew, Rebecca Lobo, Carolyn Peck, Andrea Carter, and man, the man that's just itching to get to the reveal, our resident bracketologist, Charlie Cream. We have got quite a night for you ahead. What are you guys most looking forward to when it comes to what this bracket will reveal? Not only who the one seeds are, but their path to get to the final four. Who has the Whoa. toughest path? Who has the easiest? I'm looking to see how does the committee look at injuries, specifically where are they going to put a team like Virginia Tech? Yeah, I'm not going to lie, Charlie. How many SEC teams did you have on the bubble? Four, four. SEC <laughs> teams. I'm interested in the bubble and specifically what SEC teams get in. Oh, man. The number one seeds keep me up at night, sure. so I am dying to find out 
out who gets that last spot oh, on the one line. It's St. Patrick's Day. It was really Groundhog Day. I think you said the exact same thing last <laughs> year. We are about to reveal that, but for the folks at home, just a quick reminder of how the regions work, all right? So this year, all roads lead to Cleveland, Ohio, as I said. But before we get there, we're going to make pit stops in Albany, New York, and Portland, Oregon. Those are your two regional sites. The four teams left standing after that will make their way to Cleveland. The national semifinals will be April 5th on ESPN, and we'll crown a national champ April 7th on ABC. As we get ready for the regional one in Albany, maybe the least intriguing of all of the one seeds, Charlie, your number one overall seed. I know this is going to shock you, but it is the undefeated no. South Carolina Gamecocks. They are your yeah. number one yeah. overall seed. Fourth straight year as a one seed, and you see the celebration right there. Here's the thing. Just because we all knew this was coming, <laughs> it doesn't make it any it's less reason, impressive right? what South Carolina has been able to do. Seven players over eight points, the depth. The speed, the skill, the athleticism, they've got inside play, they've got outside play, they have three-point shooting. I can't find a hole when I look at this <laughs> South Carolina team. It's been remarkable. They'll put their 32-game win streak up against the test when they face in the first round the winner of Sacred mm. Heart Pioneers oh, and Presbyterian, who are making their very first NCAA oh, tournament cool. appearance, their first 21 season. For season's some reason, I'm leaving Sacred Heart. Run. Those two will battle out for a chance to face South you guys Carolina got? in that first round. <laughs> no, All right, you ready for the eight nine matchup? Your eight seed, North Carolina Tar Heels, like making their 29th NCAA oh, tournament appearance. What? They lost three of their last four games entering the tournament. They will face oh, number nine seeded Michigan oh, State. Oh my god! 22 wins, the program's most in a season since 2015-16. You see the reaction there. Look, that's going to be a great battle between those two and similar tough. styles, up and down. Congratulations. Moving on to Regional 1 in Albany, your 4-13 matchup. Number 4, Indiana. Four straight oh, years of 4 Indiana. seed or higher. Prior to that oh, stretch, they've yeah, never Indiana been a 4 seed or higher. You see the reaction. It takes a second. There's a little bit of a delay. <laughs> Wait for it. There it is. That's who they're facing, Hi, the Fairfield Stags. They're going to win this year. NCAA tournament appearance. Okay. They have a 29-game win streak, second longest Bruh. active win streak in D1, only trailing Bruh. the aforementioned South Carolina. Congratulations to Carly Tebow and her Just staff and the entire team time. for the NCAA tournament. All right. How about your 5-12 matchup? Number us. five seed, Oklahoma Sooners. Third straight season with 20-plus wins, the longest 20-win oh, wow. streak since going three straight from 2014 to 17. You know, last year was all about the gritty. I think we saw it no less than 45 times. A very, like, muted response to these ladies this year. They're kind of, like, enjoying themselves and relaxing. Okay. They'll face Florida Gulf Coast as a 12 seed in the Regional 1 in Albany. They also were a 12 seed last year. They beat a five seed Washington State in the round of 64. So certainly Oklahoma on upset alert there. Do they realize that we called on them yet? Yeah. Florida Gulf. There we go. <laughs> Your 314 matchup in regional one in wow. Albany is Oregon State. That's, that's tough. Fifth yeah. time as a three seed or higher. That's six and six seed. against AP Oregon ranked teams State. this season. And as the 14th seed, they'll be facing. Eastern Washington Eagles. Oh, you can see how Oregon State stands okay. up on the sides. All the same time. There's so much, so much board. of that. It's unbelievable. And there you go. Look at the reaction from the Eagles here. 29 wins, program single season record most in Big Sky history. Congratulations, ladies. You are dancing. Oregon State, like you said, Drea, they've got size and Reagan Beard's back inside in the middle. They can shoot the, sp the shoot the three, spread the floor, and they're very disciplined. Outstanding defensive team who controls tempo. Let's get your 6-11 matchup in the regional one in Albany. It's in Nebraska. 6-2 and two in their last no, eight games Nebraska. entering the NCAA a tournament. They did a Big Ten championship I'm game. A Lost, of course, to man. Iowa <laughs> in OT. They'll be facing the Nebraska. 11 seed, the Texas A&M Aggies. Second season under Joni Taylor. What a matchup. <laughs> Look at that. That's yeah. the loudest. Like okay. Yeah, this is an A&M team that competed in South Carolina in the SEC tournament. If they can build That's what Megan was saying. momentum, carry it into the tournament, they can be on the lookout for some good things. That's the reaction of a team that wasn't sure they were getting it. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Certainly our 2-15 matchup. Notre Dame knew they were getting oh, in, what? especially after winning the Notre ACC Dame tournament their first time under coach oh, Neil oh, Ivey. They are your two seed in Regional 1 in Albany, and they'll be facing Kent State Golden Flash. 
who are making their second straight 20 win season. And in terms of Notre Dame, interested to find out what Kylie Watson's status is. She got injured in the ACC semifinal game. Notre Dame played six players in the ACC championship. They played game. motivated. They they played for Kylie Watson. That's yeah. how they won. There's only six. Of them. Hopefully, they get back to seven. They've certainly had to learn how to overcome injuries in the NCAA tournament. Your 7-10 matchup, number seven, Ole Miss Rebels. Made the Sweet, okay, sweet 16 okay. last year as an eight seed. It was the first time making the Sweet oh, yeah. 16 since it's 07. Real. Very intrigued by a possible Ole Miss, Notre Dame, round two mm-hmm. game. I know I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, exactly. But, I, but I've got to start thinking about even as we get into the weekend, next next weekend. And this one could be a really, really good round two. Well, well, 10 seed. Correct. Their opponent may have something to say about that. Your 10 seed, Marquette, yeah, Marquette Golden said, Eagles. Hold on now. Hold on now. you got to get past us. There we go. We love it. They've never made it past the second round in the previous 14 appearances. Certainly, they're looking to do that. And they'll place Ole Miss in the first round. So again, a look at your regional one in Albany, the first bracket to be okay. revealed. Let's just go big picture here when you're sort of thinking about CP. What stands out to you the most? Well, I've got to go back to last year's Final Four and remember when Iowa waved off Raven Johnson. What she say she was on? A revenge tour. And that's how motivated this South Carolina team has played all season long. Number one in the country in scoring margin. They're one of the top in the country in rebounding margin. And you know what they've added? That three-point shooting. They are number three in the country, three-point percentage, and having Tahina Pow Pow has been a great addition, and that really opens I, up I, the I lane so the post can go to work in South Carolina. South they Carolina's can score, score from the perimeter. You know, the revenge tour, we call that demon time these days. She's, yeah. she's on demon time. That's what mm-hmm. we're going to call that. Going into right the tournament. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when we think about South Carolina kind of being the measuring it stick, the two LSU. players that I'm interested in in this region faced South Carolina and played really well. Hannah Hidalgo early in the season when we were in Paris put up 31 points against South Carolina. <laughs> Aisha Kulabali for Texas A&M put up 32 points against South Carolina. Both in losing efforts, yeah, both reach. of those South teams Carolina have gotten so much better this season. So I'm excited Canada. to see those two players potentially lead their team in the tournament. Yeah, and if this region does go chalk, it would be interesting to see a rematch of South Carolina and uh, and Notre Dame. You mentioned that the game that they had um, this year in Paris, but certainly South Carolina is the team who can go into every single matchup thinking we play our best, we're winning this game. Yeah. We actually will talk with Don Staley here on the show. Courtney Lyle standing by, and we'll get some reaction from Don Staley as her team again, the number one overall seed but let's move on to regional two in albany and your one seed is the iowa hawkeyes and i iowa has gone six straight games winning after they had their last loss to indiana they're piecing it together yes caitlin clark is lighting it up but the other pieces also have contributed as well and they're looking to get back to a final four and they'll be facing either as the 16 seed and the first four in Holy Cross Crusaders or UT Martin yeah, Skyhawks. Holy, Cro- Holy Cross only won in tournament game, came against Maryland back in 1991. As for UT Martin, there you go. You see the celebration. They got the auto bid despite losing the OVC championship to Southern Indiana. Want to make the most of their opportunities. That is your 116 matchup in Regional 2 in Albany. How about your 8-9 matchup? Eight, West Virginia Mountaineers. 15th NCAA tournament appearance. Haven't made it past the second round since 1992. We see it. Okay. I was hoping they'd take the challenge for the dance and get after it. Okay. I like it. It's picking up. And they'll face nine seated Princeton Tigers. Yeah, that would be a good matchup. Yeah. There's the excitement. (laughs) Yeah. I know I'm doing this again. I'm jumping around two. So my apologies to those round one opponents. But Princeton, Iowa in round two, a Caitlin versus Caitlin matchup. Ooh. Caitlin Chen oh Princeton is a very, very good guard. So there is your eight, nine matchup in regional two oh, in the oh, Albany. Oh, no. 13, an interesting one in terms of where they would land. Your four seed Kansas State Wildcats taking their 18th NCAA tournament appearance. You see the reaction there, Charlie. They were a little bit on the bubble for you in terms of whether they'd be in the top 16. They're going to get the host now 
and those no, Manhattan they, fans, the K State faithful, they, they bring it. That should be a very exciting app. Oh, wait, we gotta get Certainly, the 13th seed that, that they'll face Portland Pilots know a thing or two about disappointing right. the fan base as oh, they just upset Gonzaga. They earn their ticket here. Second straight West Coast Conference tournament title for them. They won three of the last five. Congratulations. Your first round matchup is oh, Kansas oh, State and Portland. We move on to your 5-12 matchup in Regional 2 in Albany. And your 5 seed, the Colorado Buffaloes. Okay, Colorado. They were 6 seed in last year's tournament. They lost in the Sweet 16 to 2 seed at Iowa. But their third straight season with 20-plus wins. Listen, we, I talked about Colorado. What was this? One of the game days that we had where the schedule that they had to go through at the end of Pac-12 play was brutal. I felt like Colorado just needed a little reset. We're going to see a lot from them in the tournament. I fully believe it. And they'll face today's Missouri Valley champion, 12 seeded Drake Bulldogs. They're riding a 14-game win streak. That's the 10th longest active win streak in D1. And again, they won the Missouri right, Valley right. Championship. So they will face Colorado in the first round as we continue through the regional two bracket in Albany. And we move on now Bro. to your 314 matchup. I'm surprised Kansas State the fourth Third season. seed. I'm shocked. The LSU Tigers. Oh, the defending the champs. Oh, <laughs> the three seed. TP, your reaction here? Uh, look, LSU is playing some of their best basketball. I don't think anybody in that bracket wants to see them when you've got to face an Angel Reese, a Michaela Williams, an Anissa Morrow. And if last year Poa is back healthy, listen, LSU is going to be a team to have to reckon with. I would love to know what's going on in Kim Mulkey's mind right now. She's <laughs> wearing her green, though. She's wearing her green. Yeah, she's got her green on. She is ready. Maybe she's already seen She's it. already thinking. She's like, okay, all right, here we go. Well, Coach, let's answer one thing for you. Who are you? Be playing 14 seeded Rice Owls. Right, First right, NCAA right. tournament appearance since 2019 Look for the Owls. I love it. I love it. Look at the hug. Let us see how that is. That is so precious. I love that. So that is your 314 matchup hey, in the regional two in Albany as we move right along to your 611 matchup. Your six seed, the Louisville Cardinals, yeah, under Jeff Wolf's 17th season. They've got three of the top yeah. five leading scores this season, transferred to yeah. Louisville this season, yeah. a team that's been here before. They'll face as the 11 seed, Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders, 21st NCAA tournament appearance. Last time they won a tournament game, 2007, so certainly they'll be upset-minded when they face Louisville. Moving on to your 215 matchup in the Regional 2 in Albany. And your two seeded UCLA Bruins. Okay. Yeah. Highest seed okay. in program history. And this region is simply a murderer's row. But UCLA has all of the pieces to win a national championship. Yeah. Lauren Betts is in a I'm huge key now. for them on both ends of the floor, but certainly experienced depth shooting in an, in an inside game. Their first round matchup will be the Cal Baptist Lancers. It's their first NCAA tournament appearance. Congratulations. Welcome to the yeah. Welcome to dance, ladies. Put your dancing shoes Bro, on. I think you the shoes on right now. They certainly are. Congratulations. What a matchup for you. What a moment. As we continue on down the regional two bracket in Albany with your 7-10 matchup. It will be number seven, Creighton, like the their 10th NCAA tournament appearance. They were a sixth seed in last year's tournament, losing in the round of 64 to Mississippi State. And they will be facing in the first round your 10 seeded UNLV <laughs> Rebels. Third straight NCAA tournament appearance for the Rebels, seeking their first win in the tournament since 1991. Yeah, the Rock's got something going on in the desert. Something's happening in the desert. And there it is. You take a full look now at the bracket oh for Regional God. 2 in Albany. And you kind of hinted at it already, Rebecca. Murderer's Row in this bracket. What are you sort of looking I, at the most I here? mean, the strength of the top four teams <laughs> yeah, in this bracket is incredible, especially if you're looking at it from Iowa's point of view. UCLA is your two seed, certainly a national championship contender. LSU as your three, the, the reigning national yeah. champion, the team that beat you in the national championship game. And then K-State, again, if all seeds hold, K-State and Iowa have already played Played twice this year. They, they split uh, in terms of uh, Iowa loss at home, and then Iowa beat them on a neutral court. So this region, we haven't seen the, the last two regions yet, but holy cow, this region's tough. LSU may be a little disappointed as a three. Remember, they were a three last year, too. 
and they took it all the yeah, way home. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Hey, right. right. any, any more thoughts on this bracket? Well, listen, I had UCLA and LSU in my final four. So when you talk about these two teams being in the same region, this is definitely going to be a tough battle. Watching those two teams potentially go against each other with the size inside and the dynamic guards on the outside is going to be really impressive. We don't know if it's the most difficult bracket yet because we still have half the bracket. Has, has Albany deal. sold out all their tickets? Yeah, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have to imagine it's, it's already done. We will move on to the Portland regions when we come up as so many teams are standing by to see their fates revealed. Your women's selection show continues after this. These are all the teams that are like, please bust through this commercial break and hurry up. I'd like to know where we're going. We'll be back in just a minute. Watch me. Are so for three? The NCAA <laughs> Women's Selection Special is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? All right. Let's talk about it, people. Let's talk about it. Because I don't know if you guys heard me in the beginning of this video. If you just tuned in, me and Megan are going to Portland. And let me tell you, the reason I was screaming is because every time I didn't see Virginia Tech there, I was excited. If you guys know, big Georgia Amor fan. So I get to go see her in person. I might throw up. Right, Brooke? Yeah, I'm jealous because I can't go. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, But Albany. Albany's tough. That's yeah. crazy. I think Iowa. Oh, my God. You guys, okay, I was reading some of this chat. You, some of you guys don't think LSU is going to make it past the Sweet 16, for real? I honestly, I could probably agree with that. I feel like they're going to choke a little bit. Really? I don't know. I don't know about that. Oh. I, I honestly don't think one of the big-name teams is going to win it this year. Who do you think is going to win? I don't know, but I just don't feel like it's going to be like a South Carolina, LSU. Like, I don't know. Like, I just don't think it's going to be one of them. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so. I'm not surprised. Let, let me get it straight. I'm not surprised if they win, and I'm not upset if they win. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I, I could see them not winning. Yeah. Huh. All right. If you had to pick, like, a random team to win then, and this goes for the chat. If it's not a South Carolina and Iowa, the expected people to win, who do you guys think? Is coming out this bracket? Yeah. Who do you think will not – or who would go well, – how do I want to put this? In Albany, what team do you think can make it to the Final Four? That's not like the UCLA, the Iowa, the South Carolinas, the um, – I really think Notre Dame – I really think Notre Dame can upset someone, but that means – no, I really, I would, I would say Notre Dame. Notre Dame. UCLA, UConn. Hey, they put out a stat actually, guys, that said that UConn has the best chance of beating South Carolina, like according to some simulation. Really? Yeah. I know. Which I, I was like, oh, okay. I didn't think that either. You're right. It's an upset if Notre Dame wins. That's true. No, not yeah, Colorado. Think, if you're gonna, yeah, Colorado. Like, if you have like a random, I think Creighton has like a randomly good <laughs> chance. <laughs> and I think um, Nebraska, honestly, like Nebraska. Nebraska. <laughs> we are I new. Know. We are new to the Nebraska fan base. No, they no. could come out of the woodwork. You know, you never know. That's heck of funny. No, a lot of Ole Miss. Ole Miss has a good shot. I think a lot of UCLA's and UConn's in the chat. I mean, I like either of them. Yeah, but UConn's not in this. Oh, yeah, box. UConn's not in Albany. Oh, shoot, UConn's it's back. We're back. Oh, snap. I have you guys on mute. Albany weird. <laughs> it's an <laughs> Albany. 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 So Southern. Albany. Uh, all right, let's reveal your next one seed Woo! is the there USC go. Trojans. Their first USC. time as a one seed since 1986. 1986. What a testament to the job Lindsey Gottlieb has done there and to the star quality of Juju Watkins. This is a complete team, but Juju Watkins oh, wow. 
is the next star in women's college basketball. She's even said they're maybe a little ahead of schedule from where they thought that they would be, but certainly so exciting. 12 and 1 since February 1st. It's the second best win percentage by a major conference team since then. South Carolina 13 and 0. They'll face Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, who's making their very first NCAA tournament appearance. Let's go. They're in Texas. They got shorts on. Super good. <laughs> Shout out to the Islanders. They'd be looking for Southland's first NCAA tournament win since Stephen F. Austin upset Xavier back in 2000. Now for your 8-9 matchup in Regional 3 in Portland. And your 8 seed is Kansas. 9-2 and two in their last 11 games, so a hot streak as they enter the NCAA tournament. They're facing your 9 seeded Michigan Wolverines, making their 12th tournament appearance. They lost in the second round last year, but made it to the Elite Eight back in 2022. We move right along to your 4-13 matchup in Regional 3 in Portland. Number 4, Virginia Tech. Second straight year as a 4 seed or higher. They were a 1 seed last year. There were some certainly some questions, Charlie, about whether they would be impacted with their seating with uh, the questionable availability for Liz Kitley, who was injured in the regular season, the last game of, of it. But it did not seem to impact them as of now. We'll get into that more in just a second. They'll be facing 15 seated Marshall, making their second NCAA tournament appearance for Sun Belt title. 26 wins this season, a program record. Congratulations, lady. Let me tell you, that's a good, that's a game you want to see because Marshall, they sub five at a time. They're not afraid to shoot the three, and they're going to press you for 40 minutes. And they took 99 <laughs> shots in the summer. I love it. I love it. Shoot your shot, right? Okay, we move on to your 5-12 matchup in the Regional 3 in Portland. That's the Baylor Bears. They were seventh seed in last year's tournament. Three-time national champs, of course, under Kim Mulkey, and won six of their last seven games. They're certainly coming in hot themselves. They'll face as the 12 seed Vanderbilt or Columbia. Vanderbilt, 22 wins this season. The program's most since 2011. And Columbia making their first NCAA tournament appearance, one of two Ivy League teams to make the tournament this season. Congratulations. They'll be one of the first. Yeah, that might be the spiciest play-in game so you think far. So? Yeah, yeah. If you know, you know. Just, and, if you know, you know. And Columbia, Texas A&M right now are tied oh for God. best reaction. <laughs> yeah. I like that you're keeping track of that. Please. <laughs> right, reaction, one seeds as far as reaction. <laughs> we move on in the Regional 3 in Portland for your 314 matchup and your third seed, the Yukon Huskies. 31st time being a three seed or higher. We remember, of course, our Elite Eight streak was stopped last year. But what do you make of UConn being a three seed? It's a tar it's tournament time, and Paige Becker's look. You don't care what number you put in front of UConn; she is going to be ready to play. When you look at the way she was a tear through the Big East tournament, um, woo. Who is right? Says Jackson State, who will be facing <laughs> UConn. Although Jackson State making coming in with a 21 game win streak, that's also tied for the fourth longest uh, active win streak. They will be dancing. And bring the trophy yes, to the trophy. party. Bring, them, bring yeah. the ticket. Yeah. Bring everything you got. They got all the props. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we continue on with your 6-11 matchup in Regional 3 in Portland. And your number six seed is the Syracuse Orange. Second straight 20 win season. And, of course, they've got Deja Fair, who you love. Yeah, and this is the thing. When you talk about this is, again, skipping. Syracuse has to get through somebody. UConn has to get through Jackson State. But when I think about Nika Mule, two-time biggest defensive player of the year, going up against Deja Fair, one of the best buckets in the game. That one's exciting for me. And it's interesting note, those two teams met in a closed-door scrimmage before the season started. So those teams have seen one another. Those dang closed-door scrimmage. Open those As for who they'll play, they don't exactly know yet it will either be the Auburn oh, Tigers a good playing game. or the Arizona Wildcats who will be in the first four game Auburn first 20 win season since 2018-19 Arizona seven seed in last year's tournament they lost yeah, a two seed in Maryland in the round of 32 you said they will back down yeah, 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 yeah. you like a defensive matchup game of the 50s that is your six <laughs> I love the prediction that's your 6-11 matchup we move on to the 2-15 matchup in regional three in Portland the two seeded Ohio State Buckeyes. JT Sheldon. Yeah. Cody McMahon. They bring that full court pressure. They do. Outright Big Ten regular season chance for the first time since 2017 18. I can't tell if they're thrilled or not. I hope so, ladies. No, they got a little chip on their shoulder. We know what happened. They got a little chip on their shoulder. They're, they're going to come ready. They will play 
Number 15 seeded Maine Black Bears. 10th NCAA tournament appearance. Last time they won a tournament game back in 1999. They'll see if they can pull the upset over Ohio State. That year 215 matchup. We move on in the regional three in Portland. Your 710 matchup. Number seven seeded Duke. They were a three seed in last year's tournament. They're doing hard better. I was <laughs> They'll face the 10 seeded Richmond Spiders. First conference tournament championship since 1991. They won the Atlantic 10. And you see the reaction there. They got the trophy, too. I love the trophy flex. <laughs> Just a reminder of why we're here. That your 7-10 matchup. We'll take a look at the full bracket for Regional 3 in Portland. Yeah. Just want to get your sort of two tops reaction as you take a look at the field here. Well, out of the three that we've seen so far, this is officially the certified bucket region. Think about the buckets that are in this region. Juju Watkins, bucket. Paige Beckers for UConn, bucket. Georgia Amor for Virginia Tech, bucket. DeAsia Fair for Syracuse, bucket. Those are all players that could pop off 30 points, 40, 40 points. Yeah. This is the bucket. But you got buckets, you got defensive teams. Kansas, you've got Auburn, Arizona, Duke. Uh, Ohio State. So I want to see if they can stop the bucket getters that I just Let's named. Say. And I got a really quick potential Sweet 16 rematch. UConn, Ohio State. <laughs> Ohio State just dismantled UConn with their pressure yes. last year. UConn has Paige Beckers along with two other point guards on the floor this season if they match up. All right. Charlie is like, stop filibustering. He had one question. Who is going to be that final one seed? And we will reveal that yeah, after the break. <laughs> and I love getting my Ryan Seacrest on. Again, some of the best reactions so far as we have one more bracket to reveal I love in right. Portland's on the way who will be we'll break oh, things down me. we'll talk to the selection hey, committee hey, and Don Staley all that's yeah. still ahead stick around yeah. that's gonna be a good one and this next bracket wait that Portland that Portland bracket's tough Ohio State what they say uh USC Ohio State Virginia Tech Virginia Tech Syracuse Kansas. I'm going to start panicking now that Virginia Tech. Yeah, they're in a tough quarter there. They just need to make it to the Sweet 16. That's all I need them to do. <laughs> What's that, two wins? Yeah. First That's, and second round. I don't care about after that. <laughs> and they're hosting, no? I think they're hosting it, too. Yeah, right? Black, yeah. It said Blackford. Blackford, Virginia or something like that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. See on upset alert. Yeah. See, look, Texas or Stanford number one. Who do you guys think should have the number one seed, Texas or Stanford? You know what? Unpopular opinion. I think Texas should have the number one seed. I'm going Stanford. (laughs) I think it's gonna end up being Stanford. Yeah, I know, but I think Texas had a really good season. Yeah, but not good enough to host the first or second round. I don't know. If they if they beat Stanford on a hosting bid right Oops. now, I might cry. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to that one. You can go yeah. see Stanford play uh, that's, whoever. That, that's the one I can go to, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, the only Pac-12 games I've seen are the ones that we had to go to. That's one. That's <laughs> yeah. No, for real. That's, that's it. Oh, man. But next year, there's there's not that problem. So yeah, and that's because they're moving to the ACC. I, I luckily get. I think that's why I've been watching ACC so much. I get ACC on my ESPN. Yeah, yeah, me too. And Big Big Ten, I think. I want. I wish I got more SEC stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, Fairfield. No mention about Fairfield. Have you heard about Fairfield, Brooke? Haven't heard about them? Yeah, they're like 29 and 0. They've been playing like really good. Oh, were they the ones that like created a um like a resume to get into yeah. the yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. They could go far. They haven't been called yet though, right? Mm-mm. I don't think so. Maybe. No. Oh, 29 and 1. Careful. Did yeah. someone say 29 and 1? Sorry. Or they're on a 29 game win streak, my bad. <laughs> Oops. How far do we think? How far do we think Maryland's gonna go? No, not far. I don't know about that one. I think they kind of got lucky for that Ohio State uh, um, upset. 
And if Sellers hitting though, they might make it past the first round, but they need more offense. Yeah. They need more help. All right, we're back. But, I think. And USC, it all comes down to this one. Will it be Texas? Will it be Stanford? They're like, please just go. And we will yeah. do that as we reveal in Regional 4 in Portland, your one seat is oh, the Texas it. Longhorns. <laughs> a one seat for the first time since 2004. Texas is such a oh, tough no. defensive team. They, they gave Iowa State all they could handle oh, in the Big 12 championship it. game. Didn't let them complete passes, put them up full court. Oh, and they are powered now by Madison Booker, the incredible freshman who can get to her spots on the floor, That's score crazy. on just about anybody, and celebrate with just about anybody. Yes, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Get it. That's what you do when you're the first freshman to win Big 12 Player of the Year, Co-Player of the Year with Skylar Van. Congratulations, you no, are the one seed Texas. Just feeling. keep it going. <laughs> They'll be facing the Drexel Dragons as the 16th seed in the first round. We'll be looking for their first NCAA tournament win. So congratulations to Texas. You are, in fact, that final one seed in Regional 4 in Portland. Your 8-9 matchup. Number eight, Alabama Crimson Tide. 13th in CAA tournament appearance, made three of the last four. 23 wins is the program's most since the 1997-98 season. Congratulations to Bama. You'll be dancing with number nine, Florida State. Seventh seed in last year's tournament, they lost to Georgia in the round of 65. That year, eight, nine matches. They continue through the regional four in Portland. Number four, Gonzaga, the highest seed by a West Coast team in tournament history. Four players, first team all West Coast. And they're getting to host, so despite losing in the WCC championship game to Portland, Dang, Gonzaga still gets team. to play first and second round games in Spokane. I've played out there in Washington during my time at Tennessee. We took it out of Maryland. That place gets loud. Those fans go crazy. That is going to be a really tough place to play. This is an interesting angle. The loss. Yeah, yeah I lost. Yeah. My heart, uh, now I'm hot. And they'll be playing the team making their first tournament appearance since 1995, number 13, UC oh, Irvine. Yeah, Trisha does There's a reaction. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, need, I need some anteater swag, I think. They uh, are riding a six game win streak, won all six of them by double digits. So they've been beating oh, wow. up on teams and they dance now with Gonzaga in the first round. As for your 5 12 matchup in Regional 4 in Portland, number five, Utah Utes, making their third straight tournament appearance. I agree. And they'll be facing 12 seeded South Dakota State. One of two Division One teams that have a 20 plus game win streak in each of the last two seasons. We have a potential really interesting second round matchup if Utah advances to face Gonzaga. These are two teams that take a lot of threes, play really fast. They combine to make 20 threes per game. Congratulations hey, Utah to your 5 12 matchup. We move on to our 3 14 matchup. That'd be a really good game. Number three, NC State. Oh, they're three going. higher for the fourth time in the last five years. Tons of defense there, and they'll be facing. There we go. We see. There's the gritty. Finally, ladies, y'all got the assignment. Let's go. So now Rivers took Madison with his dance challenge and said, "Okay, I raise you. I raise you. That's right. Oh, to have those 19 year old knees again, and they'll be facing 14 seeded Chattanooga." A 16 seed in last year's tournament, seeking their first tournament win since oh, 2004. Man. Congratulations to the Southern champion Chattanooga Mops. That your 314 matchup. We move right, on to the 611 matchup. Number six, Lady Vols, Tennessee. Ooh. 41 previous tournament appearance, 39 and two in their first game. Yeah, and this is a Tennessee team that has shown incredible promise, especially when they play South Carolina. That is the type of performance and energy they have to carry into the tournament against every opponent, not just the Gamecocks. Don't give them your back. You hear me, Portland. Tennessee? I know you hear me. <laughs> and they'll be facing the Horizon champion, number 11 seed, Green Bay Phoenix. There's a. It's a little. It's a little. Okay. It's a tiny bit pixelated. We see you standing, ladies. We see you. Yeah. Excited, and we can hear you more than we can see you. Congratulations, that 6 11 matchup. As for your 2 15 well, matchup, we saw the, the reaction one, the there. They weren't a one seed, but Stanford, a two seed in regional four in Portland, 100 tournament oh, yeah, wins, no, the third gonna, most all time behind only UConn and Tennessee. There we go. Oh, yeah. Look, I okay. don't think a coach gonna have their team motivated. Correct. Tar Vanderveer is gonna have the Cardinal ready. 
and they'll be facing the MEAC champion at 15 Norfolk State Spartan Nets, riding a 15-game win streak. That's tied for the seventh longest active win streak in D1 right now. There you go. Get the camera. Look at yourself on the camera. <laughs> part of Norfolk State is Diamond Johnson. Mm -hmm. Played at Rutgers. Yeah. Played at NC State at the NCAA uh -huh. tournament. Now she's with the Spartans. As for your 7-10 matchup in Regional 4 in Portland, 7 seeded uh -huh. Iowa State. They want six, and they'll be facing the Maryland Terrapins, who won 18 straight games in the first round, have the first round since 2001. See the reaction there from the Terps. Congratulations to your 7-10 matchup. And again, we take a full look at Regional 4 in Portland. The bracket, Charlie, again, I know you were most intrigued by what was going to happen here. You're taking it. Well, Texas gets the number one seed. I think it's a case of what have you done for me lately. Just